Now, I am not a Debbie Downer most of the time, I think. But if you're learning to code, you probably will fail for the first time. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not dictating your path on how you should learn to code. But generally, everyone makes mistakes and I've made a few mistakes and I thought I would cover it in this video. Also, another side note is everyone's path is different. So everyone learns how to code differently and they reach their destination at different stages. That there will always be the same. But let's just talk about the common ways on how people fail the first time they're trying to code. So when you learn to code, your first roadblock is which programming language do you choose? There's Python, there's JavaScript, there's R, there's HTML, there's CSS, there's C Sharp, there's C++, there's just C, there's SQL. It's a lot of programming languages. And for a beginner, you actually just don't know which one to choose. Here's a problem. Sometimes you can start with one language get bored of it and then think, hey, coding, maybe it's not for me. I suck at it. But it could also be that that specific programming language isn't your vibe or it just doesn't fit your onboarding style, which just means it maybe isn't a good programming language for you specifically to start off with. So to give you an example, let's just say you start learning JavaScript as your first programming language. You start learning it, you don't really like it, and you just stop. But in a different scenario, let's just say you started with Python first and you picked it up, you learned it, you enjoyed it, and then a few months down the line, you start learning JavaScript and it's a much better experience. That can definitely happen. Because to be honest, once you learn one programming language, they all have similar thinking patterns and the logic behind that is the same. They just have different syntax, different operations, and different ways of using them. But I generally think that once you learn one programming language, it's so much more easier to pick up others. So that's one mistake that coders can make. And trust me, I've made that mistake as well, where I didn't choose the right programming language that fitted my style. So one of the first programming languages I started with was JavaScript. And then if I remember correctly, I didn't really like JavaScript and I stopped coding. A few years later, I tried Python and I liked it. I went back to learn JavaScript and it went a lot more better. And now look at me. Okay, so when you learn to code and you pick a programming language, it could definitely be that your programming language that you've chosen might just not suit you. So just take a break, choose another language and try again. The next reason as to why a lot of people may fail to learn to code is the theory road. Well, I like to call it the theory road. Now, the theory road is when you decide to choose a course or some sort of formal learning to learn to code. And here's an issue with most coding courses out there. They're almost too logical. They're almost too perfect. They're too process driven. So for example, let's just say that you enroll to a Python course. The course will go through things like this. This is how you print on Python. This is how you format strings on Python. This is how you do lists on Python. Now, what exactly does it mean to someone who has no experience to the coding world? So you learn about what a list is in Python, but what do you do with lists? When should you use them? And that's why I say it's almost too process driven because that's not how coders learn. Coders solve problems. 100% of your script is solving some sort of problems. And in that script, you'll also encounter multiple other problems. And the most learning I did in the beginning of my coding journey was actually to do a lot of projects. And to be honest, I think that's common advice. I think when you ask a developer, how do you learn to code? A lot of them will say, hey, do some projects. But why is doing projects and why is practical work so important? Like I said, when you are working on something to code, you are probably solving a problem in most cases. So for instance, maybe you need to analyze Excel data. Maybe you want the total sales in an Excel data set and for some reason you want to do it on Python. This is the actual steps that you'll go through. So I have this Excel file and I want to use Python. How exactly would I import Excel into Python? Now that you have the Excel file into Python, how would you sum up sales? And then maybe when you try summing up the sales column, it gives you an error. So now you have to think, okay, why am I getting this error? Maybe you do some digging and you realize, hey, the sales column is in a text format. It needs to be in a number format. And that's when you need to know how to convert an object to an integer. So that would require converting column types. If you just took a course and one of the course section was how to convert column types, you don't have that background. You're not too sure why you'd ever need it and it doesn't give you that full range of learning. Now, the other thing that a lot of people do is that when they learn to code, they sign up for a bunch of courses. I did this 
Exhibit A. If I could show you my old Udemy account, there was a lot of courses on there and I didn't finish any. Why? Because you end up signing for four 20 hour courses, you get overwhelmed, you quit, everyone does it. It's just a lot of work, nobody wants to do work. If I could do negative work, I would. So that's why you shouldn't really go too much to the theory method when you learn to code. The other common way that people may fail when they're learning to code is that they go through the route of practice. So this is where you just pick a project and you go for it. And this way probably involves a lot of Google and a lot of Stack Overflow, which nobody is judging. I also do that too. Now, the good thing about learning to code by practice is that you get to learn on the job and you know experience those common problems that every coder has. But there are some disadvantages here. The first thing is that when you just decide, okay, I'm not going to do any sort of formal training. I'm just going to pick a project and do it. You generally end up having to copy and paste a lot of code, which isn't too good when you're starting off because often you don't really know what specific parts of the code may do. And the bigger issue here is that when you get into that habit of copying and pasting a lot of the code, you don't actually know what's happening when things go wrong. So if there's an error in your code, you actually don't know what the issue is and how you can resolve that. So if there is an error, it generally takes longer to solve. So to put it simply, when you're learning code from scratch, you know the process of going from A to C, the process being A, B, C, of course. So if there's an error at stage B, you know what you've done, you know what you need to do to fix the error. But if you copy and paste a lot, you don't know A, B, and C, you probably only know maybe a bit of A and a bit of C, but that's it. And that's the main issue. Also, if you ask any developer, they will tell you that it's way better solving your own errors and looking at your own piece of code than looking at someone else's piece of code. The other thing is that when you go straight to doing projects, you could also pick up some bad practices, such as naming convention, laying out your script incorrectly, etc. Now this is definitely where a course helps because courses generally teach you good practice and good layout from the get-go. Okay, so by this stage, you're probably thinking, well, D, you're telling me learning with courses isn't good, but now you're also telling me learning with practice isn't good. What am I going to do? Which I totally get, I understand, but I am not telling you not to do courses and I'm definitely not telling you not to practice with projects. All I'm telling you is keep in mind of those common mistakes that people do when they learn to code because I've definitely made those mistakes. The answer lies in between. I think the answer on how you can effectively learn to code quickly would be doing some sort of course and also some practice. Now, whether you do 50% course learning and 50% projects or 20% course learning and 80% projects, that's up to you. Like I said, different people learn differently, but definitely try a combination. And lastly, the other point I wanted to make is that coding can be hard to pick up. There's a lot of videos out there where people can say, hey, learn to code in 30 days and get a job. It doesn't work like that. Being a sufficient coder takes time and practice. I still make mistakes all the time and I'm still learning every day. So always just remember to take it at your own pace. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions also, and please subscribe as well. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.